So Emerald Ash Borer came into the United States in probably the early 1990s, but it wasn't detected until 2002. And homeowners from the Detroit area were calling in extension specialists and saying, you know, our ash trees are dying, we don't know why, could you come out and take a look? So the extension specialists went out and when they peeled back the bark of these trees, they saw these uh, serpentine galleries that this beetle had made right underneath the bark and they had no idea what this bug was or where it came from. They collected some samples from it and they actually had to ship them off to middle um, to Eastern Europe and have the insect identified. We knew it was an agrilus species beetle. We actually have a native agrilus beetles in the United States. We have one called the bronze birch borer which attacks the um, stressed white birch trees that sometimes you see along roadways and landscapes. And we also have what's called a two-line chestnut borer that attacks oak trees. So they're in the same family as the emerald ash borer, but the ash trees had never encountered an agrilus beetle before. So the beetle is from Asia. We don't know specifically where. We know it came in on solid wood packaging material. So basically it was just hidden underneath the bark. They put those on pallets. Those pallets came across into the United States. They got warm, the beetle got happy, and it emerged. Unfortunately, with a lot of invasive species, the beetle can sit there for up to 10 years, you know, just slowly building its population. And the next thing you know, it just explodes, which is exactly what happened here in the Detroit area. And uh, it's been absolutely devastating ever since. In Michigan alone, we've lost probably 40 million trees. And across the United States, we're, we're looking at many more and more millions than that. The beetle itself, as an adult, does very little damage to the tree. You can see some feeding damage here, just kind of in the margin. It's been a very slow year for emerald ash borer because it's been so cold. So their life cycle is thrown off just a little bit. So we're a little bit late this year. The adult doesn't do a lot of damage, but then the female goes up and down the trunk of the tree and she lays eggs. And she can lay up to about 60 eggs along the trunk of the tree. So we have these wrapped to protect them, at least for this year, against the beetles laying eggs. And then these cages that you see on here, these are actually caged adult beetles that I put in last week that we are trying to force them to oviposition on the tree. So if we can get them to lay eggs in these particular spots, we know those came from caged beetles, and we can look to see how the tree might be reacting to those beetles. If she prefers or didn't prefer to lay an egg, she may absolutely refuse to lay an egg. We don't, we don't really know exactly what's going to happen there. But it's a controlled experiment rather than something, you know, like this where the whole branch is susceptible. It is absolutely a human problem. The, the beetle itself moves less than a mile a year by itself. But when you're looking at places up by Houghton, Michigan, that have these infestations, you know, that's a problem. Since identification in Michigan, it has invaded 13 other states, mostly because people have been moving firewood, different uh, woody materials, and the beetle gets transported that way, and it's also in two Canadian provinces. They just tunnel on the inside, chewing away at the tree, and, and what causes the tree to die in the long run is many larvae around the tree cut off the transportation system of water and nutrients. So you're basically girdling the tree. And in highly infested areas, you're looking at death within three to four years of big, big trees. So I have 245 trees in this particular plantation site. And I have five different species of ash, four North American ash and one Asian ash. At this point, we don't know of any North American ash tree that is not susceptible, which is scary. It could definitely lead to a great deal of devastation in the forests across the United States. And um, we're hoping a lot of the scope of this particular project here at the Tree Research Center at Michigan State is to try to determine why the beetle likes some trees better than others. And in different research that has been going on over the last five or six years, we found the beetle prefers green ash, and it prefers white ash, and it seems to prefer least blue ash. And although that's not a species that's common in Michigan, we do have some pockets here in southern Michigan, it is very important that if that particular species is a little bit more resistant, what can we learn from that? And really that is kind of the idea of what we have going on here at, in this particular project. 
there's so many concerns. Uh, you have to look at it from, from a carbon point of view. Okay, you're, you're talking about millions and millions and millions of tons of carbon that are being cut down, removed. Um, trees are, of course, an excellent sink for carbon. Also, it's, it's a big source of, of money for a lot of foresters. You had mentioned earlier baseball bats. Ash is often used for baseball bats. Flooring, furniture, cabinetry, you name it. It's a big, it's a, it's a pretty big high value tree. And unfortunately, with as many trees that are dying, most people are just going and cutting them all down. It's an aesthetic thing, but it's also a heating and cooling thing. Uh, trees can greatly reduce the electrical um, costs to a company for heating and also for cooling. So there's a lot with that. Um, and also, you have to think about, okay, well, what's the mental value of a tree? You know, how do I feel about it? How does a kid feel about it? And in urban areas, trees a lot of times are the only connection that children have with nature. We are making progress. There are billboards. We are starting to finally get some chemical treatments that are working, that are consistent, that kill both the adults and the larvae. But in a forest setting, you can't fight it like that. There, there has to be something else, and unfortunately, we just haven't found that yet. These are in um, various stages of decline. The one just past the, the Bailey Street sign there is in pretty much full decline. It starts from the top of the canopy down, and you know, as you're moving this way through those four trees there, you can kind of see different stages. And what the beetles do is they start at the top, and, and the theory is it's okay, you're gonna, you're gonna eat a little bit, and then the female will go lay some eggs. And then she's gonna eat a little bit, and then she's gonna lay some eggs. So the beetle knows where good oval position sites are and they just kind of work their way down the trees. Now these trees will probably be fully dead by next year. Now these branches coming out here, these are called epicormic shoots and those are a result probably of a gallery right above. So the tree is trying to fight back and put out foliage, it's like emergency foliage, <laughs> to try to you know, be able to make food and be able to survive. So in Detroit, the entire top of the canopy will be just destroyed and you'll see sprouts coming up from the bottom where the tree has tried to, tried to recover. 